Good morning. How are you today? I'm John Zadar. This is early Monday morning. It is June 26th and you are watching On Top and Hot where we like to discuss hot OTC and penny stocks. Now normally I give you these videos late in the evening but today I've got an appointment so rather than cheat you of a video I'm just going to give it to you earlier. Now I like to share with you stocks that are under five bucks on any market that happens to make us money. On. And I got one of these for you today. This is a mining company out of Canada. Yeah, I told you I'd do at least one of these a week for you. Now, as most of you know, mining is not my forte. The technical jargon is way over my head, so we're not going to get real technical here. But I do recognize good news when I see it. Now, I did find the company the same way I find all the companies we talk about, looking at the charts first. That's where I do my due diligence and research looking for hot penny stocks. I don't pay any mind to the news or the filings till I find a chart that has heat. I'm looking for volume coming in, a breakout setup, or a real strong surge. Well, RECHF Recharge Resources is not disappointed. She had a breakout back in April, jumped over 100%, bouncing off of a 52-week low. She did creep back down. She's hovering over that 52-week low and bouncing right now, and she's underneath the 200-day SMA getting ready to break out. She's looking good. Now, the company has some big news, but they're not making any money right now because they are an exploration mining company that is focused on the primary metals for the EV industry, lithium, cobalt, nickel, and copper. And with the increasing demand for this, the company is in a great position to thrive in this market. So, RE, CHF, Recharge Resources, finished the day at about 25 and a half cents, but she fell about one and a half percent today. She is on the pink tier, she's current, but we don't see the verified profile or the verified transfer agent. We would like to see that. So, as I told you, Recharge Resources is a Canadian mineral exploration company focused on exploring and developing the production of high-value battery metals to create green, renewable energy to meet the demands of advancing electric vehicle and fuel cell vehicle market. To get some more information, let's jump on over to their website, the company's site, recharge-resources.com. Now the company mines a lot of different metals. They mine gold, copper, palladium, but they're primarily focused on these EV critical metals because the market is surging right now. Lithium is the biggest one. Everybody seems to be mining lithium and why not? The demand for it is growing. They tell us here that they expect the demand to increase by 600% between 2019 and 2025. We are smack dab in the middle of that right now. Nickel is another one of those critical metals they are mining. Using nickel in car batteries offers greater energy density and storage at lower cost. It also increases the driving range for the vehicles. However, getting enough nickel right now is a problem. The other key ingredient for these batteries is cobalt. Had no clue. Cobalt is considered the highest material supply chain risk for electric vehicles in the short term as battery demand increases. EV batteries can have up to 20 kilograms, 45 pounds of cobalt in each battery. And currently, cobalt makes up about 20% of the weight of the battery. Uh, do the math there, you're looking at 250 pounds per battery. Now the company's got a few different projects, four of them, Poquitos 1 and 2. This is in Salta, Argentina. Poquitos 1 and 2 combined is 1.3 thousand hectares of lithium brine project. This is located in Salar de Poquitos, Argentina. The basins in the region produce over 52% of all the lithium brine resources in the world. It is a hot area. Recharge Resources signed an option agreement with Spay Resources. This is another mining company on the open market for the opportunity to acquire up to 100% undivided interest in the Poquitos 2 project. Another one of their projects is Georgia Lake West and North, another lithium property that they have estimated has 6.5 million tons of lithium. Whoa! Murray Ridge Pinchy Lake is another one of their projects. It is composed of approximately 75% nickel, 25% iron, and 0% sulfur. Therefore, it is considered natural steel. 
With the absence of sulfur, this allows the concentrate to be shipped directly to steel mills without incurring smelting and refining costs, and there's minimal environmental problems. And their last project, Brussels Creek. The Brussels Creek project is an early stage gold, copper, palladium exploration project located in British Columbia. Let's go take a look at what she was doing, relatively speaking, with her volume on Friday. Yes, her volume took a hit on Friday, as most companies did. And I'm blaming Powell for this. Powell came on Bloomberg on Thursday, and he told us all that these interest rate hikes were going to be continuing. Well, Friday morning's market opened up and they were not happy. All day the SPY and the NASDAQ fell. So I'm not surprised to see Recharge Resources also took a dip as well. She finished the day with 122,000 shares, normally doing 196,000. Share structure for Recharge Resources isn't bad. Outstanding share count is about 68 million. If we can trust a restricted share count, subtract that from our outstanding, we would have about 64 million in the float. I'm not gonna call it a low float, but it's not a bad float. It's an average float. Looking at her disclosures, we have no SEC filings to look at and all of her financials are on time. So let's go take a look at that news. Now initially, it looks like there's not a lot of news for the company, when really there is a lot of news. What we see here are four pieces of news from 2023 and two from 2020. Where's all the news from 2021 and 2022? Well, it's out there and I'm not talking about Google. Way too much work. Just jump on back to the company's website, click that news and media link here and you can get all their news. It's all here. You're not going to miss out on any of it. And most of it is good. They're doing a lot of exploration and they're finding what they're looking for. Now, I'm going to just zoom in on the most current news. I'm looking at their last two news presses. This one came out in January. The company's Poquitos One lithium brine project flows for two weeks, averaging 161 parts per million lithium. These lithium mines are a lot like oil wells. When they hit the mark, it's a gusher. But instead of black oil coming out, it's water. And in that water is all the lithium, and they have to extract it out. The next piece of news came out in February. The company's 2023 drilling campaign at Poquitos One Lithium Brine Project plans another milestone under the offtake letter of intent, which they initiated September of last year, to supply up to 20,000 tons per year of lithium carbonate equivalent. Looking at that news press, it came out September 30th of last year. They tell us that the company had executed a letter of intent with Rich Link Capital, their two Chinese partners. They're going to supply them with 10 to 20,000 tons of lithium annually. And this is all coming from their Poquitos One project. They also tell us that they're about ready to embark on a production ready well drill program. So things are moving along nicely. They tell us here that Richlink and its clients will contract to purchase a minimum of 10,000 to 20,000 tons of lithium chloride salt, which will be 99.5% pure or higher. This is going to be because of the Poquitos One EcoSol facility, which is being commissioned near the town of Poquitos. And that's the next deal they made, also September of last year. They inform us here that the company has executed a technology license agreement for countrywide use of EcoSolve lithium solvent exchange extraction equipment, which is to be built into the plant that's going to be capable of producing 20,000 tons of lithium annually. Now, the great thing about EcoSolve is that they produce this lithium much quicker at a 95% purity rate or better. But just as important, they're saving you money. Operating costs are reduced by more than 90% as the majority of the solvent is reclaimed. You see, their process is to go into the water with chemicals and leach out, extract that lithium, and then they get back their chemical and can reuse it over and over again. Well, that's not the way most lithium miners do it. They build evaporation ponds. These real shallow ponds, real big, and they let the sun do all the work. It evaporates the water, leaving the lithium behind. Well, this company saves you a lot of money because you don't have to build those evaporation ponds at all. You're going to save yourself not only $100 million in capital expense, but you're also going to save yourself 12 to 18 months of construction time. 
They tell us they are recovering 95% of that solvent that they're going to be able to reuse. They're producing lithium at 95% purity or better, and they're not wasting all of that water. Now, I found two other pieces of news that were just out there. They weren't anywhere to be found. I just happened to stumble upon them. Now, this article came out October 21st of last year, and I am over here at the website mining-technology.com. Recharge Resources is intending to spin out Canadian Nickel Project Next Charge. Next Charge shares will be spun out, with Recharge shareholders getting one share for every three shares they hold. Recharge Resources is planning to transfer its 100% owned Pinchy Lake Nickel Project in Canada to a new subsidiary, which will be named Next Charge Battery Metals. Recharge has set December 5th, 2022 as the effective date of the spinout. Sounds like old news, doesn't it? It's not. It hasn't happened yet. I haven't seen any more news, any filings anywhere about this spinout. I think it got put on the back burner. Somebody put a pin in it and put it on the board. So we're still looking forward to this. We have not missed it. The last thing I want to share with you is they got themselves a price target of $1.12. Now I know that sounds really low. You're not normally seeing price targets so low, but keep in mind the price right now, that is a 400% increase. So let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at ticker RECHF, Recharge Resources. And we're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And hey, that was free too. <laughs> so we are looking at a six month, four hour review for RECHF. Now she has a high, 52 week high in October of $1.05. She started falling from that point, hitting this high of 55 cents, but obviously she wasn't done falling, coming all the way down here to 25 cents, underneath her 200 day SMA, which isn't even in the picture yet. She fell further down and then had a really serious climb up here to about 50 cents and then a big bad fall down to 13 cents at the beginning of April. Now off of this low bubble, she bounced 100%. And the only reason I think she stopped is because she hit her head on the 200 day SMA. She came back down and she took another run at it and this time it looks successful. She's gotten herself on top of the 200. And look at how sweet all of these SMAs look. Our 200 haul, our 50 day, and our 20 day. They're all swooping up beautifully towards that 200. The only thing I would like to see better here is our volume. That did fall a lot today. Our oscillators, well, up until today, they were pretty hot, but they have had a bit of a cool off here, but they're not looking bad. 20 day, one hour view. Now that looks good. We got an uptrend on the entire chart. She was on her 50 day SMA here, riding all the way up, but she had two solid pokes through the 200 day SMA here, saying, I'm not going there anymore. I'm pushing away from it. She pushed herself up onto that 50 and she's bouncing on that 50 right now. And she looks like she is ready to climb. All of our SMAs are climbing up. It looks good. Oscillators, our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is trying to recover right now after this fall. Same thing with our MACD. You read both of these the same, the PPO and the MACD. You want that blue line on the top going up. And our RSI is pretty cool right now, down at 50. Looking at our five day, five minute chart. So we hit a high here of 30 cents and the low back here of 16 cents. Wow, what a low. Stabbed through that 200, jumped right back here, had a nice pop up, came back. She's sitting on her 200 day SMA, not looking like she wants to come underneath it. It is kind of bowing down right now, but the oscillators show that she's in recovery. She came down and she's working her way back up right now. Now there's a lot more due diligence you can do on this, especially since I am not into mining. I don't know how to even comprehend the technical information. So you got all that to consider. I like RECHF. She seems to be on the verge of going to commercialization. They got a lot going on right now. And they're working with all of those precious metals with the EVs, nickel, lithium, and cobalt. But as I said, do some more research. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See you, folks. Ba -da -ba -da.
パパランパラパパパラパラパパランパラパパティラリトゥルルパパランパンパンパンパラリンルンパンパン